Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, February 19th, 2019 edition of the Sands and its Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich and I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. A good reminder today from Didi about knowing what you log. Didi takes the example of a little bit an odd log format created by an Arduino application. Now, of course, no, not a lot of people do run Arduino in sort of in enterprise networks and the like, but it's really sort of just an example for that you sometimes end up with logs that are really difficult to read and where you first need to spend a little bit of time to actually research the log format. This is of course in particular difficult if you run into this log after a possible incident. So always a best practice to take a look at your logs before there is an incident in order to figure out, am I able to read them? What do these logs actually mean? Or in some cases, just who do I ask for help to actually explain to me what this log means? That's in particular important for custom application where often it's just the developer that actually created the application that can really explain the context for these logs. And a group of researchers with Google is took a step back and sort of took a high level view at the various specter vulnerabilities and different mitigation techniques. Now, one thing they sort of came up with was that really all the software mitigation techniques are insufficient to really prevent specter, that it really takes hardware mitigation in order to protect the system. Without sufficient hardware protection, there is always a chance that different threats are able to read each other's data, which is really sort of at the core of the specter vulnerability. Now, the researchers that contributed to this paper, they distinguished themselves by being the team behind the Google Chrome JavaScript engine. And one thing they're pointing out is that in particular, the ability of browsers, for example, to execute arbitrary code from untrusted sources in the form of JavaScript makes them inherently inherently vulnerable to variations of Spectre. Now, Google mitigated this in Google Chrome by setting up different processes instead of just using different threats. Uh, so that's uh, one reason behind this newer architecture of Google Chrome. But then again, what it really takes is hardware that actually addresses this issue and removes some of the shared components that we had in current architectures. And VMware today released updates for the Run C Docker vulnerability. Now, if you wonder why does uh, VMware release an update for this? Well, VMware is more than just their sort of core virtualization products uh, like uh, their VMware workstation alike, but this addresses products that VMware uses that are including Docker. Like for example, it's integrated OpenStack with Kubernetes. Uh, that's a uh, part and they have all this uh, Sphere integrated containers. These are all products that are built around of this Docker technology and as a result are vulnerable to this run C problem. And I already mentioned that there are exploits available for this issue. So this is something that you need to address quickly. I often find that organizations really don't have a good handle in what to do with recorded customer support phone calls. They're often stored in electronic form. Of course, everybody uses voice over IP right now. And with that systems that essentially save these calls as files. A Swedish healthcare company now learned this lesson the hard way. Apparently, they exposed 2.7 million calls dating back to 2013. In a video, it is displayed how these calls are pretty much easily accessible via an exposed Apache web server. Looks like they have directory listings enabled. So once you find the right directory, you see a list with all these call files split up in 
into different subdirectories and all you have to do is download them. Now, there are a number of different solutions that you can purchase or install and set up uh, that will protect yourself yet it either encrypt the data. They will also in some cases allow, for example, customer service agents to mask part of the call that contains specific sensitive information. But of course, the one place where you definitely should not expose them or store them is an exposed Apache web server. Well, and that's it for today. So thanks for listening and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.